um, perspectives and have more or less familiarity with machine learning data sets, which is the kind of focus of our paper. Um, so I'm Emily, this is collaborative work with um, Bernie Koch and um, Jacob Foster who are at UCLA and Alex Hanna who is at Google with me. So at a high level, like what are machine learning data sets? Um, we take a couple of different perspectives on machine learning data sets and this kind of grounds why we're sort of looking at them as um, this really important kind of site of inquiry. So machine learning data set, they exemplify machine learning tasks. And this is typically done through a collection of input and output data instances and some kind of associated quantitative uh, metric of evaluation. And these tasks can be really tightly scoped and sometimes grounded in a particular problem domain. Um, for example, um, on the slide, I've put a, um, a data set that's been defined to support chest radiograph analysis in a medical context. So really um, sort of tightly scoped problem. Um, but a lot of data sets are really, really broadly scoped. Um, ImageNet, for example, is a data set that consists of millions of images and tens of thousands of categories uh, that each image has been labeled with. And it's been developed to support this kind of generic um, effort of understanding images and classifying images. Um, so not super rooted in a kind of particular domain or application or type of image. It's really just like, let's try and grab a whole bunch of images on the internet and see if we can build machines to label the things that are in them. Um, the field of machine learning also um, develops data set as community resources. This is really common within this academic field. And so data sets are also the primary mode um, by which models are evaluated and compared. And so in this sense, data sets can be understood as measurement devices. And benchmarking on common shared data sets is really the dominant paradigm for scientific evaluation within this field. Um, as an example, this is like what a leaderboard might look like. So Glue is a natural language processing um, technology benchmark. And so people can evaluate their model on a set of tasks within this data set and then kind of stack rank their model like on this leaderboard. And so because of the role that data sets play as shared evaluative resources, um, they also play a really central role in organizing the field as a whole. Um, and we see that, you know, because benchmarking is such, such a dominant mode of evaluating, the field kind of collectively relies upon upward trends on particular benchmarks as sometimes noisy, but generally agreed upon meaningful indicators of progress towards some kind of shared goal. Um, and they coordinate researchers around shared problems. So um, I've brought up ImageNet again here, which was a data set that was developed in 2010. Um, and it became a really kind of central um, focal point within the computer vision community in but 2012, um, start of 2013, when the first sort of deep learning model started to outperform all the other models. And so the field really coalesced around this particular benchmark data set as this core place to evaluate their models, test out their models, compare one another. Um, and um, this ended up you know, kind of being really central to the resurgence of neural networking as a modeling paradigm. Um, so this basically brought us um, to pose um, some questions, which was, you know, how concentrated are machine learning task communities on different data sets? And like, has this changed over time? Um, how frequently are machine learning researchers borrowing data sets from other tasks? Um, how frequently are they grounding data in a particular domain? And we were also interested in what institutions are responsible for major machine learning benchmarks sort of in circulation. And um, these are like big questions that sort of require large scale empirical analysis that kind of spans the whole community. And so um, we were really happy to find this online repository called Papers with Code. And Papers with Code hosts um, data sets and um, benchmark metrics associated with data sets and all sorts of different papers. And they're organized around different tasks. So medical image analysis might be one kind of high level task, um, you know, natural language processing might be another high level task. And then there were sort of subtasks in there. 
And um, so we relied on this online repository as a kind of proxy for how the field as a whole is working with data. It's not a one-to-one -one mapping. Um, it doesn't capture every single data set in rotation in the community, but it did offer us sort of a starting point to examine some of these big questions about how data sets are being developed and used and reused within the field. Um, and so just as an example of something that we would look at with this repository on this slide, I've shown a data set called CIFAR 10. And this was originally developed for image classification. Um, and so this sort of dotted line arrow going up to the top here shows a whole bunch of different papers that use this data set to evaluate their image classification models. And we see this kind of benchmark chart kind of, you know, numbers kind of going up over time. Um, but this data set has also been taken and used um, sort of more recently as an evaluative model for image generation. Um, and so here we see a whole other machine learning task that's formulated around a very different problem using the same data set. Um, and we again see this kind of benchmark chart. So this is sort of like what we were using this um, papers with code repository to examine. And um, just at a high level, a couple of things that we found, which I think will be interesting to return to in the discussion is we found data sets are very regularly adopted um, from one problem domain to another. So for example, um, on this slide, I've showed data sets that are used to evaluate image generation models. So these are models that try and synthesize um, images that maybe represent people's faces or objects or street landscapes or something, but they're basically producing images that try and have some kind of structure. And the data sets that have been used to evaluate these kinds of models have predominantly been um, designed for other tasks. So designed for facial detection, for scene understanding, for object recognition, and so on. So that's what we mean when we say a data set has been adapted from another problem domain. Uh, and then we also found that research is very highly concentrated on just a small number of data sets overall. So researchers tend to kind of return to the same data set over and over again. And this, this makes a lot of sense because in order to publish a paper within the field, people tend to you know, need to compare against an agreed upon sort of standard measure. And so from you know, the kind of perspective of how data sets organize the field, that's very natural. But it does beg a question of, you know, are we over indexing on a small number of data sets? And, you know, when is it appropriate to develop new data sets? And when might we, um, you know, kind of be, you know, in, a, in, in, a, in, a, in an inappropriate way, you know, kind of constraining like where the field can go because we're focusing on such a small number of data sets. And then our final finding, which I'd really like to return to in the discussion, is that not only is there increasing concentration on fewer and fewer data sets, but the dominant data sets that are being used have been introduced by researchers at a handful of institutions. And these are mostly Western institutions um, and fairly elite, well-funded institutions um, like you know, uh, Microsoft, Google, Princeton, Stanford, and so on. And so, um, some things that I would love to talk about um, relate to the kind of scientific validity implications of these findings, as well as the social inequality findings here. And these are sort of, you know, at least two dimensions of the problem. There's probably many more. And then I'd also like to think a little bit about, okay, like moving forward, what do we do? You know, the answer um, is not just a simple, oh, we just need to build more data sets, um, but rather I think at least two things that we need to be thinking about are um, better grounding data sets in context, right? Sort of understanding how we can um, root our problems um, in specific applications, in specific problem domains, as opposed to kind of developing data sets that, you know, are framed as encompassing the world when in reality, you know, they, they very much don't. Um, and then I'd also love to think about what more robust and trustworthy um, data governance might look like in the field of machine learning and how can we pull from other data heavy disciplines in order to, um, you know, kind of do a little bit better with how we are um, developing and using data in this field. So I will stop there um, and pass it off and then really looking forward to, to the conversation that we're going to have about these topics.